Welcome to Professional Truck Driving School. Today we're going to explain the easiest way to do the pre-trip inspection. Now the pre-trip inspection as a test consists of three sections. Section 1 and Section 1 talks about the in-cab check. What do you need to check while you are inside the cab of the tractor? And Section 2 which talks about the connection between the tractor and trailer so the combination connection and the coupling system and section 3 talks about three forms so section 3 has three forms form A, B and C and the day of the test on the day of the test you're gonna be asked to do only one form of these three forms so after you do section 1 Section 2, the examiner is going to ask you to perform only one of these three forms, A, B, or C. Form A talks about the tractor front. Form B talks about the remaining of the tractor, while Form C talks only about the trailer. So, Forms A and B going to cover the whole tractor, while Form C talks only about the trailer. So let's start with the most important part, most important section, which is the in-cab check. So the in-cab check, you're going to start like this. Seat belt. Seat belt, not cut, ribbed or frayed. It's secured. Latch and unlatch working. So you're going to latch it, unlatch it, then you're going to latch it again. So latch working. After the seat belt, you're going to check your three emergency devices or equipment, which are three reflective triangles, three reflective triangles, operational, not damaged, color red or orange, and they are weighted base. The second emergency equipment is the fire extinguisher for the fire extinguisher you have to have it, it with you type ABC or BC10 so one of these types ABC or BC10 fully charged and rated safety inspection for that fire extinguisher is up to date and the safety pen is in place the third emergency equipment you're gonna need with you inside the cab is six extra fuses different types and at least one circuit breaker of each type done with the safety so done with the seat belt done with the three emergency equipment now it's time to safe start the engine to safe start the engine first of all you need to make sure that the spring brakes are applied they are pulled out so they are applied the spring brakes or the barking brakes then you need to press the clutch all the way to the floor and make sure the gear is neutral then you start the ignition so you have the gauges and then you start the engine and then you release the clutch slowly. Now the truck is running, so you're gonna start with the gauges. The first gauge right here is the temperature gauge. The temperature gauge must be working and rises gradually to the normal operating range. For the temperature is 170 to 210 Fahrenheit. No warning light and now the reading is almost 180 Fahrenheit the second gauge is the air pressure gauge again it's working rises gradually to the normal operating range which is between 35 and 75 PSI and for the idling it's between 5 to 20 PSI and now we have almost 20 then we have the air 
uh, pressure gauges we have two gauges right here for the air pressure and for the air pressure gauges it should be working and the air is built up to the governor cut out which is between 120 and 140 psi no warning light and at 150 psi the safety valve opens to release the extra air to save the system from damage now here for the Volvo trucks we don't have voltmeter gauge which is shown as a gauge here on the dashboard but it's digital so you have to find it how to find it so right here on this arm right here for the wipers and washers here you have a button right here so this button is a, a menu button so you press that menu button till you see the word gauges right here on the dashboard once you see the gauges you press this button which is inner so enter right here you press enter to go to the gauges now this is the temperature we don't want the temperature we want this the voltmeter gauge so the the uh, picture or, or a picture of a battery with the voltage and the voltage here is 13.7 and for the voltmeter gauge it should be between the voltage should be between 12 and 14 and a half 14.5 and no warning light so we now done with the gauges four gauges as we said temperature gauge air pressure gauge and oil pressure gauge and finally the voltmeter gauge now we move to the lighting indicators we're gonna check one by one lighting indicators right here on the dashboard we start with left turn signal right turn signal four-way flashers then we turn the headlights on to check the high beam this is the high beam and the high beam covers the distance from 350 to 500 feet and low beam covers the distance 250 to 300 feet and finally the ABS light is off done with the lighting indicators now we go to the horns we have two types of horns we have to check one by one electric working and air working from the air brusher we go to the heater and the froster so we turn we turn the fan on the heat and we have to switch to check first the defroster the defroster working front working and the floor working then you turn the fan off and the heat off after we're done with the heater and the froster we go to the windshield and mirrors we're gonna start with the mirrors right here that mirror over there is the hood mirror flat and convex all are clean not cracked secured and adjusted for driving the brackets for the mirror are secured and not damaged for the windshield now clean not cracked secured and the rubber seal around the, uh, the windshield is not missing or damaged safety sticker right here and the insurance sticker are present and up to date no obstruction of view and no illegal stickers then we go to the wipers and washers for the wipers and washers we have the wipers we have the arm and the blade they are secured and not damaged the blade is not frayed and the washers work now we're gonna do the brake check so after that we check the wipers and washers we start with the brake check for the brake check the brake check is 
the most important part in the whole pre-trip simply because any mistakes you do for the break for the brake check the test is over done in order to make it simple for you i want you to know that for the the air brake you gonna do seven brake checks or seven brake tests these seven brake tests are divided into actual brakes and air system brake or air system test sorry now for the air for the actual brakes you have four types of brakes inside the cab these four types of brakes two of them right here are the barking brakes the yellow is the tractor barking brake the red is the trailer parking brake or trailer emergency brake so these are the barking brakes you have to check one by one then you go to the other two brake tests which are trailer service brake or the johnson bar trailer service brake and here we have the service brake which is the foot brake so again for the brakes first of all you're gonna do what check the actual brakes and they are four so you're gonna do four separate tests one by one now let's start with the actual brakes this is the first part we're gonna start with the tractor barking brake for the tractor barking brake the yellow knob right here we need air pressure minimum 100 bsi so one minimum air pressure 100 bsi then we press the clutch all the way to the floor to go to low gear low gear first gear so all the way left then you go to the first gear now you keep the tractor applied because this is what we're gonna test so keep it applied activated and just release the red which is the trailer the trailer barking brake so now what we have we have only one brake applied which is the tractor barking brake so we're gonna try to move now to check that brake how we gonna try to move we just need to release the clutch slowly so both hands must be on the steering and we release the clutch slowly but not fully just to feel the tug or the power so we're gonna see if the truck moves or not so once we release the clutch slowly we we see that the truck is not moving so the brake works fine we apply what we released which is the trailer so now both spring brakes are applied and then we go to neutral and we take off the clutch and flat on the floor done with the first brake which is the tractor barking brake now we're gonna do the same thing but with the trailer barking brake which is test number two trailer barking brake the red knob minimum air pressure is 100 bsi again we're gonna press the clutch all the way to the floor and then we go to low gear then we apply which they apply the trailer emergency brake which is applied and just we release the yellow which is the tractor barking brake so now what we have we have only one brake applied which is the trailer barking brake or the trailer emergency brake so we're gonna check if that brake working or not how we're gonna release the clutch slowly to try to move both hands on the steering we're gonna release the clutch slowly try to move again we feel the tug so the truck doesn't move so the brake works fine we apply the spring brake so both are applied and we go to neutral after we go to neutral we take off the clutch and flat on the floor so done with the barking brake so done with the first two tests which are barking brake now we go to the service how many service do we have we have two one for the trailer one for the combination for the tractor and trailer which is the service brake or foot brake so now let's start with the service trailer service brake johnson bar test number three 
First of all, minimum air pressure. Again, minimum air pressure needed, 100 PSI. We press the clutch all the way to the floor. We go to low gear. After we go to low gear, we release both spring brakes one by one. So we're going to release the yellow first. Then we're going to release the red. And once we release this, we have to push the foot brake. So release the red and push the foot brake to secure the vehicle. Now apply the trailer service brake and take off the foot brake or the service brake. So how many brakes now applied? Only one, which is what? the trailer service brake which we are testing now we are gonna try that brake we have to release the clutch slowly to try to move and we are gonna see if the vehicle gonna move or not so we release the clutch slowly and here we go the truck is not moving so the brake works fine so we press the clutch again all the way to down we press the brake the foot brake and take off the trailer service brake so we release it then we apply the parking brakes we take off the foot brake we go to neutral then we take off the clutch so now we're done with the trailer service brake test number three is done now let's go to to test number four which is the foot brake or the service brake now for the service brake you have to move forward so you're not gonna try to move you will actually be moving so you're gonna drive not drive too long so you're gonna drive just 10 to 15 feet and then you're gonna press the clutch and the brake to stop and see the result how are we gonna do the service brake the foot brake again minimum air pressure you should be good with that part now minimum air pressure is 100 psi then we press the clutch all the way to the floor and go to low gear. Now, we gonna release both spring brakes one by one. So we release the tractor first, then the trailer. And once you press the trailer, we push the foot brake. Both hands on the steering. Now we gonna move forward. How we gonna move forward? We release the clutch slowly. To feel the tug, once we feel the tug, we take off the brake and continue releasing the clutch, like this. So now we feel the power, so we, there is no need for the brake because now we're good. We're going to release the clutch slowly now, move forward without jerking, smoothly, both hands on the steering, you're going to move forward. As you see, we are moving forward, then we're going to press the clutch. Take off, the, uh, take off your hands from the steering, just around the steering, and push the brake. Like this. Truck should stop straight. No movement on the steering wheel. Apply the spring brakes. Take off the foot brake. Go to neutral. Take off the clutch. Now you're going to explain that if the truck moves right or left, once we push the service brake, this is going to be because of these following reasons. One, problems with the brake, or problems with the suspension, or flat or low tires, uneven ground, or shifted load. These are the five reasons that make the truck move right or left. So this is the first part for the brake check, which is testing the actual brakes. Just to remind you, we tested the tractor parking brake, we tested the trailer emergency brake, then we go to the service, which are the trailer service brake, and finally the foot brake. Now we're gonna do three tests, which are for the system. We're gonna check the air system now. So, test number five now, test number five is the system leak test. For the system leak test, First of all, you need air brusher to the governor cut off, not 100. Here, system leak to the governor cut out, which is between 120 to 140 BSI. So the most important part here is to raise up the air brusher till you hear the sneeze of the truck. So once you hear the sneeze, so this is the governor cut out. 
So just hear the sneeze. Don't do anything till you hear the sneeze. So we're gonna raise the air pressure a little bit. We're gonna build the air brusher. Make sure the air brusher is going up. And again, we have to wait till we hear the sneeze. So, point number one for the system leak is to hear the sneeze to the governor cut out. So, system leak, number one, to the governor cut out between 120 to 140. Then we press the clutch and secure the truck in low gear. One, this is number two. Now number three, engine off. Now once the engine is off, you don't need the clutch, so take off the clutch. This is very important. Once you turn the engine off, take off the clutch. Number four. Turn the ignition on. Now, when you turn the ignition on, you have to make sure the lights on the dashboard and the gauges are on. The last thing, number five, and you have to do these five things in order. Number five, to release the spring brakes. So you're going to release the spring brakes one by one. You release the yellow. And then you're going to release the red. Now, again... For the system leak, we have to do five things in order. Again, one is to the air brusher to the governor cut out. So hear the sneeze. After you hear the sneeze, you secure the vehicle to low gear. Engine is off, take off the clutch. Ignition is on, then release the spring brake. Now, once you release the spring brake, you're gonna mention, you're gonna mention to the examiner the air brusher you have. So you tell the examiner, now I have almost 95 on the air brusher, for example, on this right here. So we're going to push the service brake. So this is what you have to explain to the examiner. We're going to push the service brake for one minute, for 60 seconds. The air loss should not be more than 4 PSI in a combination vehicle within that minute. And no more than 3 PSI in a single vehicle, bobtail or single vehicle. So. Now we have 95, we said. Let's push uh, the, the service brake and see what is the air pressure gonna be. So you push now and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, up to 60. After 60, you take off the, the brake. Now, after you take off the brake, you're going to look again at the air gauge. So you tell the examiner, now I have almost 92, so I lost almost 3 PSI, and the test is a pass, because we didn't lose more than 4. So as long as you, do, you didn't, or you do not lose more than 4 PSI in the, in the, system, in the system leak test, so the test is a pass. Now once you're done, so this is done. Now test number five, the system leak is done. But keep everything as is. Don't play with anything here. Keep everything as is and just move to test number six, which is the first fan down test. Now we do this, the first fan down test to check the warning devices, the light and buzzer. By the way, the buzzer needs a running engine, but the engine now is off. So you don't, don't, don't worry about the buzzer. You just need to, to see the light to turn on. When is going to uh, turn on? Before 60 or at 60, not less than 60. So at 60 or before 60 BSI, 
on both gauges, the light, the warning light, should be on. How are we gonna do this? Again, everything is still the same, but you have to mention to the examiner that five things again. Minimum air pressure, again, we go to 100 BSI, and now I have 93. Still in low gear, this is number two. Still engine off, still ignition on, still spring brakes are released. So five things still the same. Now what we're gonna do, don't do it, just explain now. We're gonna put the, we're gonna fan down the service brake. Before 60 BSI, the light should, the light, the warning light should turn on. So let's start fanning down. So you have to keep watching the air gauges. We're almost there, almost there. The light should turn on now. Here we go, so 60, you see 60. So the light, the warning light showed on and low system air pressure. So this test is a pass as the low air pressure working. Again, First fan down to check if the, the warning light is working or not. And the test is a pass. Now the last test, number seven, is the second fan down. The second fan down we're gonna check in case we do not have the light working, the warning light working. And we are driving with system leak and the airbrush are gonna be dropping severely. Will the stop, get, will the truck gonna stop by itself? by the knobs to be popped out by themselves to, to the spring brake should pop out by themselves or not so again for the second fan down it's the pop out test in order to do that test again we have to mention five things in order minimum air pressure is 60 we have 60 still in low gear engine is still off ignition is on spring brakes are released five things in order Again, you're going to explain to the examiner what you're going to do. We're going to explain the examiner to the examiner that we're going to continue fanning down the service brake between 45 and 20. 45 and 20. Trailer emergency brake should bob out first. Between 40 and 20. Yellow tractor barking brake should bob out second to prevent a jackknife. Let's see now. So you're gonna continue fanning down. And again, look at the gauges and the spring brakes. Keep fanning down. Again. We, they bo have both to bob out. Before 20 or at 20 minimum. So here we have the barking showed up and they both popped out so the test again is a pass as long as we have 20 you see so the test is a pass so now we're done with the with testing the brakes and the air pressure so now we're gonna secure the vehicle how are we gonna secure the vehicle we press we don't apply the spring brakes because we've seen them applied we just Press the clutch all the way to the floor and we go to neutral. Then we turn the ignition, not the engine, because the engine is already off. So we turn the ignition off. We take off the clutch in order to make sure that we take off the key out of the ignition. So we take off the key. In real life, we have to keep it inside our buckets. So so the vehicle is secured, no one is going to move it while I'm going to complete and check the other parts of the vehicle or while I'm under the vehicle. So we put it back here in the test. And this is going to be the end of section one. Welcome to professional truck driving school.